you guys don't know me, I'm Suzy Sakamoto. I'm the creator of The Perfect Tide, which is a recipe site that I launched a few years ago since moving to the coast. I have most of my razor clam recipes. Some of you guys have made them, like razor clam ceviche, razor clam pizza, and razor clams with jalapeno poppers. Um, and today I'll be demonstrating my brand new recipe, which is razor clam casino. It's a presentation on a half shell. I have it displayed over here um, with razor clams, breadcrumbs, bacon, parmesan, and a bunch of different herbs. I tend to cook a lot with fresh herbs. I cook mainly Mediterranean style. I was born and raised in Lebanon and then moved here and now we landed on the coast. And I have been cooking a lot of our locally caught seafood, but mainly with my Mediterranean and Lebanese upbringing. So if you've made one of my recipes and it's a little bit lighter and brighter, that's probably why. So clams casino is usually displayed on a half shell with a manila clam still attached. And then it's a bread crumb mixture right on top. They serve it as an appetizer in restaurants. And I've also found it in the deli section of some grocery stores. So I'm showing you how to do it with razor clams because we can't keep razor clams on the half shell. Um, you have to break them apart and process them, and I found a way to do it with razor clams on the half shell. And I've tested different recipes, and I ended up with the one with bacon and garlic and fresh herbs, because I like it the most, but I do have one that's a little spicier, that doesn't have bacon and all the other fancy stuff in it, but it's my uh, spicy version. So to get started with Clams Casino, you have to use the razor clam shells. And with the razor clam shells, I have, you know, when you go razor clamming, you either come out with something that's small or a medium-sized one. So this recipe can vary. And if you end up with a little bit left over, you can also bake it casserole style. So step one in making it is taking the razor clam shells and processing them just like you would with a normal razor clam. So when you deep clean a razor clam, uh, we do it, we clean our razor clams in boiling water and that pops everything out. And that way leaves with the shells, leaves you with the shells nice and clean. A lot of people do the knife method. We just do the boiling and hot water method. Um, and then what I do to clean the shells really well is I scrub them with a shellfish brush, or you can use a sponge to get the outsides nice and clean. But you want to be careful because they're really fragile and they break really easily. They've broken on me a lot. So you want to be extremely fragile when working with them. Yeah. We blanch them in hot water for just a couple seconds once they pop open, then that really sterilizes the shells and then you can put them in ice bath after that. And then if anybody has any questions, I will be here after too to answer any of them. Otherwise, feel free to email me or comment under the recipe itself. I'll be able to answer um, them on my blog as well. Okay, so once these are done, I just crack them down the center, just like this. And then I leave them on a sheet pan to dry. Then step two is, once we have our shells, I like to process my clams at that point. So, we all know and love our razor clams. This is the neck, and then this is the digger. The neck has a bad rep because it's super thin, but it's also really chewy, and the secret to cooking it is just don't cook it as long or cut them smaller and that way they can, you know, they don't take as long to cook them and they end up buttery and juicy and tender still. Um, and if you guys don't know yet about the razor clam muscle, this is a part that I like to add in a lot, a lot of my dishes. This is the muscle that usually hangs around at the bottom of the zipper and it's, when you cook it, it tastes like scallops. So how we clean our clams is on my website as well, and that saves the scallop at the bottom. And that way you can cook it separately and make it like you like, if you like scallops, make it that way. Otherwise, you can um, just process them and put them with a dish, and it'll really just tenderize the entire dish. So I first cut the clams down the center. I start either with the zipper or the neck on top, doesn't matter. And I like to cut the neck a lot thinner than I do with the digger because the digger is juicier and it's tender, a little bit more tender. So I like to, to uh, leave that 
a little bit thicker so you get that texture, but then the neck, process it as small as possible. Okay, so we have, you can see how nice and shredded I like to keep them. So the next thing I do is I take my shell and I put the razor clams right on the shell just like this. I put a big mound of them. So I am not shy with the razor clams because you have to think about separating each clam and we're using the half shell for five clams. So that this recipe makes 10 shells. Um, and there's a lot of meat on the clams, so you want to use a lot of razor clams. As you can see, the big mounds of it, we're not putting just a few pieces. And then after this, we make the bread mixture. Okay, so again, a big helping of clams. So with a bread mixture, it's a combination of breadcrumbs, just regular old breadcrumbs. I'll move that up here so you guys can see them. Okay, and then we're going to move on to our bacon. So our bacon, I usually do three slices of bacon. I cut it up finely, just like I did with the razor clams, and cook them on the skillet. But my butter is sticking that over right now, so I'm going to use the one I pre-cooked ones I pre-cooked. Then comes the diced green onions, and then Parmesan cheese. Uh, I'll do the garlic next. And garlic is one of those ingredients that it, I can't go far without adding in most dishes. Uh, we're not shy with our garlic around here. If I don't have garlic in a dish, my mom will be somewhere coming out of nowhere and be like, Susie! Where's the garlic? She, <laughs> she always knows that I don't have garlic in a dish. Okay, so now we have our garlic added. And I use two cloves. Uh, if you can handle more, use three cloves. T two big cloves, that is. Okay, then comes the parsley for freshness. And parsley, again, is finely minced, finely chopped. As you can see, there's no big leaves anywhere. I like to keep it nice and small. Then I'm going to add my butter. And we're going to mix up the breadcrumb mixture. Okay, so we're there right now. I'm really smelling the garlic, the, uh, the parsley, the diced green onions, the bacon. It's all ready to go. So what I do next is take my razor clam shell. And I'm using the air fryer today. You can use an air fryer or an oven. My recipe will have both on there so you can do whichever one that you feel comfortable with. In the air fryer, I preheat it to 375. And this is the point where I like to preheat it because it really doesn't take long. In the oven, preheat it in advance so it's nice and ready and hot when you put it in. Um, but the air fryer doesn't take long. And they really only cook in there for about four to five minutes at most. So now this is at 375 waiting for us, and I do it on air fry mode. So not the regular bake, just regular air fry. Okay, now we're going to take our razor clam shells with the razor clams on them, and we're going to pack in our mixture. And the mixture, again, pressing down very gently because the razor clam shells tend to break really easily at this point, but pressing them down gently, and I put a ton, so don't be shy with them, just like this, and I pop them straight on either the sheet pan or my air fryer basket, and they tend to slide around in there because it's, this one has a little bit of groove, so they are not going to slide around as much, but in the oven, if you're using a regular sheet pan, they tend to slide around a ton. So what I like to do is just crumble up uh, foil or parchment paper to create a little bit of a rough surface and then pop them on there right on top. And then that way, they're not sliding around everywhere. Okay, now the first one goes in. I'm going to create the rest of them really quick. And then everybody's going to be able to sample them. We made a ton of different samples. so. Surprise, you get to try them. 
I like to keep it a secret. I like secrets. I know. <laughs> okay. So the next big mound, this is a monster clam. I mean, wow. So I usually serve these for an appetizer, but I guess monster clams can be served as a meal as well. But for the most part, they are usually served as an appetizer. They're really good with the razor clam spaghetti to have on the side. Uh, if you're really wanting just a full razor clam meal, I have a creamy Mediterranean style pasta with razor clams. Or you can do shrimp scampi. They'll be good with anything creamy, lemony, a little bit lighter of a meal. Okay, and the last one going in, and then we get to bake these all together. Hello! Okay, so we got tons of bacon on there. So the reason why I'm going to do, pick this up a little bit, the reason why I separate the clams and not mix everything all together is you can do it that way you could do it in a casserole that style as well but mainly because i like the juices of the razor clams cooking together and not taking over the bacon and when you cook the bacon keep the bacon grease separate from this so leave the bacon grease out don't add it to the recipe just use butter because the bacon tends to overpower the clams and we really want to taste them so that's the number one reason why i put the clams first Against they bake in their own juices, you're really getting a bite of clams, and then on the top, you're getting that crunch. You want to keep them separate. You can, if you have no time, put them together. I wouldn't, but you can definitely do that. Um, you can also bake this all together in a sheet pan um, or a baking dish. So put all your clams at the bottom. That's how I have them sampled today. Put all the clams at the bottom, and then the bread mixture on top and then pop them in the oven that way. They will take a little bit longer, but really just got to watch to not overcook them. As soon as the top is lightly browned, then the mixture is likely ready at that point. You can come bring them right here. This is my husband helping. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so while those are in the oven, I do have some that are done that I can show you what they look like. It's a lot easier if I hold this thing. Okay. And how I like to display these is on a long plate just like this. Or if you have a circle nice platter, then display them clockwise around in a circle pattern. But otherwise, this is how they end up. Just golden brown on top. The razor clams are only at the bottom. And when you bite into them, you get a big bite of razor clams at the bottom and then a nice crunchy bacon garlic mixture right on top. You can't go wrong with garlic and bacon. I mean, the other one has jalapenos in it and nice and spicy hot sauce. So you can add a little bit of hot sauce if you like that to the top of these as well. Um, but otherwise, this is how I like to do them. And that is all I have, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Come on up for samples and try it out and let me know how you like them.